this your first crash? Yes. And uh, quite a pleasant one, I hope. I... Oh, uh, delightful, thank you. No, no. I feel that I should thank you. The delight is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's nice that we're all so happy about it, isn't it? Daddy go to the races tomorrow? Uh, no, dear. Daddy go to court on speeding rap. <clears throat> A reference to the father's police record may tend to undermine the child's parental respect. <clears throat> Perhaps you're right, dear. Asta, are your hands clean? <coughs> That's fine. Daddy, drink. Oh, thanks, pal. Mommy's a great kid. I'm much obliged. Oh, there's nothing. Any time. Daddy, drink milk. Uh, <laughs> Daddy doesn't like milk. Stella, bring Mr. Charles a glass of milk. But, darling, we uh, mustn't let him become headstrong. Daddy, drink milk. He's made up his mind. He won't drink it unless you do, too. But I can't drink milk. I'm a big boy now. I uh, wear long pants. I go out with girls. No, drink milk. If you let him down now, you'll kill all his respect. Stella, take the shaker away. Well? It's awfully white, isn't it? You wanted to be a father. Drunk, dear? I keep seeing purple cows. <laughs> horseshoe! Horseshoe! Beautiful! Beautiful! Oh! See now, Jim, why Wichita's gonna uh, win this league? What's that you say, lady? Wichita's going to win what? It's in the bag, Omaha, and you're holding it! Yeah. That is a smart play, huh? <laughs> the smartest play you've seen today, mister. Ask your pitcher what's the last thing he expected, and he'll tell you a hit and run. What a beauty! Two outs, a man on first, and three and one on the batter, yeah. And that second baseman isn't surprised much. Look at him, he can't get over it! I think this guy is right, it was horseshoe. Why, sure, listen. See, it's the luckiest ball club in the business. It's kept him up there all year. What's the matter, second baseman? Can't you get over that surprise? I see what you mean. You mean Wichita's been getting braced like this all year, huh? All year? I never see anything like it. Your girl is just prejudiced. Women don't know anything about baseball anyway. I could push this bird's face in with pleasure. What's all this? What's the game, Val? What's the game? There they are. Yeah, just in time. I love you. I love you, too. I love you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Well, probably Santa Claus. Is there a Mr. McCauley in the house? Oh. Oh, pardon me. Yes? Oh, just a moment. My wife. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, yes, what would you say? He is. Well, where is he now? Oh, very well. Oh, excuse us. <laughs> he's back in town. Why not? Why not? Yes, he's, he's waiting for me now. Uh, oh, forgive me, Mrs. Charles, but I've been so upset. You know, it's no joke working for a man like that. He's, uh, well, I guess I'd better be off. Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Merry Christmas. Uh, I'll same to you. The next person that says Merry Christmas to me, I'll kill him. So you're still a policeman? Well, I'd hardly put it that way. No? How would you put it? I'd say that Nick was more of a genius. My Nick? 
You see, Nick doesn't actually work with the police. In fact, people call on him who think he's better than the police. He's paid very large fees because his work is important, extremely important. My dear Nora, I didn't say it wasn't important. <laughs> Well, you implied that you didn't think it was very important. You gave the impression that you thought that Nick walked up and down the street swinging a club. Oh, well, if I gave that impression, I'm heartily sorry. Oh, sure. A very handsome apology. If Nick thinks it's important to be a policeman, that's all that matters, <laughs> I suppose. But you don't know what uh, he's done. Uh, uh, darling, uh, uh, why don't you pop out to the kitchen and uh, speed up the coffee? Hmm? Some of the cases Nick has solved were considered absolutely impossible. Darling, uh, let me show you the view from the front porch. Oh, it's beautiful in the moonlight. What about the Wynan murder, or the Fingers O'Toole case, or the Slaughterhouse mystery? Or take Stinky Davis. Stinky Davis? Stinky Davis? The Stinky Davis case illustrates what I mean about Nick. Yes, I'm sure it does, Nora. Do you still take two lumps in your Stinky, I mean in your coffee? Just imagine. Four murders, all strangulation, no fingerprints, no clues. The police were baffled. Yes, of course. All they had were four bodies. So what did they do? They dumped the whole thing in Nick's lap. I see. Nobody suspected Stinky, because he'd been a cripple ever since some nitro went off while he was cracking a canister in Salt Lake. Everybody thought it was Rainbow Benny. But Nick knew that Rainbow was an expert with the shiv. Strangling was out of his line. Oh, <laughs> smart Nick. Then they turned the heat on Slasher Martin, who ran a dice joint down in Chinatown. But Slasher had an alibi with Squinty Burke and Studsy Green, so that took care of him. But all the time, Nick was certain that Stinky Davis was the killer. Why? Because he had him pegged right away for a two-timing, double-crossing rat. Would the police listen to Nick? No. They told him it was a hophead theory, wild as local buttons, because Stinky was a cripple and couldn't navigate. So Nick got the brush off from the police. They cold-shouldered him right out. But did that stop him? No, sir. He knew the case was hot, and he was all set to start cooking on the front burner. He said, Stinky, you're the two-timing, double-crossing rat who strangled Nobbs McClure and Greasy Joe and Horseface Dan and Denver Mike. And then he turned his back on the police. And the trick worked, because Stinky got up out of his wheelchair and tried to strangle Nick with a piece of wire he had hidden in his mouth. But just in time, Nick turned around, gave him the old one, two, and knocked Stinky colder than an ice flounder. Think he wasn't a cripple at all. He was just using it to cover up his crimes. Now, what do you think of that? Well, if Nick suspected that Stinky wasn't a cripple, why didn't he have him examined by a doctor? The whole thing's so silly. Dr. Charles, you are impossible. I know you dealers. This work is not for sale. I'll handle it. I have all the contacts necessary, and I won't need 20%. Madam, I have no time to trifle with you. You bet you haven't. I know your kind. What are you doing? Now you get out How of dare here. How dare tell me Shoo. to get out? Shoo! To me? Shoo! Shoo! Please. Mr. Flandrin. Mr. Flandrin, I can't tell you what an honor this is. I've got the work right down in my cabin. I've seen the work. And you'll handle it? It's being handled already by the lady friend in your cabin. Shoo! You Go away! Work? Get out! To me! All right, let her me. handle it then. Oh, but listen. Today. Mr. Flandrin, I... <laughs> oh, no, really? Yes, ma'am. Oh, this is too funny. You say she got off the boat at Havana? Yes, ma'am. And the, who's cab... Who? Uh, Mr. Thompson, ma'am. Mr. Thompson. Oh. Oh. How are you doing? Are you Mr. Thompson? I am. <laughs> the funniest thing in the world happened. I just found out that these were your paintings. Oh, you did, huh? Yes, I, I shooed some art dealer out of here, and then the steward told me that Miss Mac, uh, that she'd left the boat, and then I knew that they weren't hers. You deduced that all by yourself, huh? Yes. Did you also deduce the fact that it's taken me two years to get him to look at my work? Oh, I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't laugh, but it was amusing. <laughs> you should have seen his face. I saw it. Oh. Well, then you uh, know what happened. Hmm. I'm frightfully sorry. Don't worry about it. Goodbye now. Do you like riding on the bus? Well, not particularly. Well, you're going to ride on it, see? Right up to Madison and 40th Street. And you're going to get out there, see? And you're going to walk right up some marble steps into an art gallery. And you're going to start talking fast. I'm only here because Mr. Thompson seemed to feel that I was unethical to a competitor. 
He insisted, out of some mistaken loyalty to you, that I come here and explain. Yes, I felt that I... Uh, I represent the Allison Galleries in Boston. Now, um, we want his work and you don't. So, after all, what harm was there in my getting rid of Mr. Flannan with a harmless little fib? We've handled his Uncle George's work for years. So it's sort of all in the family. George is the one with the twins. Oh, uh, how are the twins? Twins? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, the twins are all right. Well, it's a nice little place you have here. Nice little place. Madam, I'll have you know my resources are unlimited. Unlimited. We are giving Mr. Thompson a $2,000 advance. $2,000? $2,000. $2,200. Mr. Thompson, we will give you a $3,000 advance. Chicken feed. $3,500. Satisfied? Why? My firm has authorized me to go to $4,000. $5,000 and an exhibit all to yourself. We'll meet that. And we'll handle his work for only 15%. 10%. I'll take it. Where shall I send the contracts? Well, uh, <clears throat> I'll be at the Sherry Plaza until tomorrow. Only 10%, Mr. Flandon. Now you're being unethical. Young woman, I can be just as unethical as you can. Yes, sir, you certainly put that over. You know, look at your face. Nobody would ever think you were such a good liar. <laughs> 